<coughs> Hello, good evening everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I would like to talk about uh, uh, Dynamo Hub and uh, Rule of Speed Up. This is, is a personal experience. Uh, I've been running uh, uh, my bicycle with Dynamo Hub and Rule of Hub uh, for about 12,000 kilometers in over two years. So as you can see from the picture, there is electricity and power on the left hand side and the benefits of it is you can uh, um, power your front and rear lights and charging a small devices. So in order to, to do so you need to cycling at least at 15 km per hour in order to generate uh, the maximum power. Um, as you can imagine um, cycling 15 km per hour is not really uh, a big speed. Um, you can achieve this speed easily on, on a flat land uh, um, on a daily basis. Um, things changing when you go touring. Uh, you probably going fully loaded for uh, 10 days, a couple of weeks or even more. And um, the bigger the distance and the easiest uh, is to find hills. And when the speed drops uh, uh, below 13 km per hour, or actually 15 km per hour, uh, the power generated from the Dynamo Hub uh, is basically useless. So you imagine climb a hill, a 10 km hill, and you go an average speed of 7 km per hour, you're going to spend over an hour climbing, and uh, at that point uh, your Dynamo Hub uh, is basically useless. So the disadvantage of um, having a dynamo hub is that uh, you're going to spend about uh, 250 pounds to buy the hub plus you need uh, um, a connector, a USB connector um, which in my case I'm using the Agar one plus uh, uh, the spokes, uh, the rims and uh, the, the, the wheel building itself so you can easily spend 400 pounds for, for a front wheel which is um, it's pretty much expensive if you if you think about it and the the thing that you're not always able to charge everything all the time it's a little bit uh, um, it's a little bit a downside in my opinion uh, um, if you want to have a dynamo hub uh, and using the, the light that's great. So you can power your light by using Dynamo Hub and you can have uh, the lights uh, every time because also in the lights uh, normally, generally speaking, there is a, a small battery where you can uh, have the light on even when you don't pedaling for like 5-6 minutes. So in this case it's great but uh, charging devices such as a small GPS or a small battery bank is not always achievable. So depending on terrain, if you go off-road, uh, it's just like a totally pointless to, to have a Dynamo Hub. If you are on the flat land, yeah, you can definitely do it, but well, the overall, in my experience, I find them pretty useless in terms of uh, powering my, my device. Now, um, speaking of hubs, uh, the hub itself is very well made. Uh, there is no maintenance whatsoever, so the hub uh, run quite smoothly. And there is a little bit of drag in the in the in the spinning, so the wheel uh, it does spin faster, but uh, it's it's lower than uh, than a road bike uh, um, wheel. That that's for sure. And um, so the benefit of the hub itself uh, is the longevity and reliability. So you can uh, really do a lot, a lot of miles uh, without uh, even think about the, the, the hub or to maintain the hub. The disadvantage of it uh, is that you are not able to service uh, um, your hub. Uh, the hub needs to be sent to the factory. And this is obviously, is, is a, can be an issue because uh, you're gonna have your wheel shipped to a factory, uh, most likely in Germany, where uh, it can be take like uh, one month, two months, or maybe two weeks. I don't know. It never happened to me, but for uh, the duration of this time, uh, 
you will need uh, another wheel if you if you want to keep cycling your bicycle and if you are cycling around the world it's just like you need another wheel so uh, this is a little bit of a downside for me so in between the cost uh, the power you're generating the amount of power you're generating and uh, to be honest uh, in my case and opinion I don't think it's worth it I rather prefer spend the same money on a Chris King hub uh, um, with the same specification on the wheel, uh, good spokes, uh, good rim and you can easily service your hub anytime you need. So on the second slide uh, you can find the rule of hub, benefit and disadvantage. So let's talk about the benefits. The benefits uh, in my opinion are the longevity and reliability. The low maintenance, you basically need to change the oil every 5000 km or once a year, whichever comes first. Uh, the chain uh, it can last approximately in between 2,500 and 3,000 kilometers. Now I would like to spend a few words about the chain. Um, I heard a lot of people quite saying, "Oh, my chain lasts forever. Uh, I've done 20,000 kilometer with one chain." Um, the reason why I say that uh, the chain. Uh, uh, should be changed every 2,500-3,000 km is because uh, you must do, uh, measure your chain and to do so you need a caliper like this so uh, the chain over time is start to stretch and by stretching the, the distance in between the links uh, is bigger and so if you don't change uh, your chain uh, when uh, reaching the, the maximum stretch you're gonna start to worn out the rest of the components such as the cog or the chain ring you can run your chain until, until it breaks or until it starts to um, jump over the cog but uh, to be honest uh, um, uh, it shouldn't be the case uh, it's not safe and um, it, it's, not, it's not good um, even performance wise you're gonna lose in performance, uh, the chain doesn't fit well on your chain ring or either the cog. Um, as I said, I normally spend about uh, 20 30 pounds for a chain, last uh, six months. I'm an happy man. And um, the cog, uh, uh, as you can see on the on the slide, uh, it should last uh, around 6,000 kilometers. That's because uh, every time uh, you change the chain, uh, you are able to flip your cog over, so using the, the, the new side and you can basically run uh, uh, the same cog for two chain. The, the chain ring, um, the one I'm using right now is made of steel and uh, it seems like it's lasting a very very long time. Uh, at the moment I'm on the second chain and um, it's basically, it seems like a pretty much new. Uh, you can also flip it over, so I said the chain ring uh, still uh, should last uh, around 30,000 km. Uh, the gear shifter and uh, the cable and the housing cable and uh, the, the mechanism at the bottom, that should last 50,000 km. Um, obviously I didn't cycle that much, and, uh, this information being given to me on the website. And, um, and so I believe so. Now uh, the benefit, another benefit is the gear ratio. On the website you rate uh, 526%. Uh, obviously this ratio, uh, this number depending on the, the cog size and, the, and your chain ring size. I currently am uh, using a 36 uh, teeth uh, chain ring and a 17 uh, uh, teeth cog and I'm able to cycling a 30% uh, uh, steep hill with a, a bicycle which weighs about 50 kilograms. So, in, yeah, th this um, aspect is, uh, is very, very good. Um, also, uh, very important, uh, by using the rule of uh, you, when you build a wheel, uh, basically the spokes are, are having the same tension and um, resulting in a very very strong wheel. So that's why um, Ruloff is very popular among the, um, on touring bike. 
Um, now uh, the disadvantage of it um, is that uh, you cannot uh, repair your hub yourself. Um, you cannot open it. It's or at least uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not able to do so. So in case you start the hub start to fail, you need to send uh, the wheel uh, to the um, to the factory. In this case, in Germany and wait for, uh, for the wheel to uh, be shipped back to you. This can be take two weeks, uh, four weeks, uh, two months, I don't know, it never happened to me fortunately, so I can't really tell, but it's something you really should consider. Um, especially if you are on a tour around the world, um, if you don't have the rear wheel, you have two choices. You buy another rule of, you build another wheel, or you can buy another standard wheel and change uh, your gear system completely uh, putting for example a Shimano uh, by this case uh, you need to spend probably six seven hundred pounds uh, and uh, the building so this is a bit of a downside so if your hub breaks after 15,000 kilometers you're having a bad luck uh, if your hub lasts uh, for uh, hundred thousand kilometer you made a deal. Um, there is uh, another downside which is in basically in the hub itself there is uh, quite a lot of friction due to the construction and um, resulting result in the, the wheel uh, it doesn't spin so freely like uh, for example a, a road bike so you basically need more power to achieve the same speed which obviously if you consider that the, a touring bike uh, with the bags can easily go up to 50 kilograms, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. But if you want to use the, the rule of hub on a road bike, I wouldn't really recommend it. A road bicycle uh, is made to go fast, the rule of is made to go far, but not fast. So then there is a, a little bit of extra weight for the rule of. Uh, apparently, the rule of weight uh, more or less uh, in between half kilograms and 700 grams more than a standard gears. Um, then there is a price. The price is not uh, um, is not a, a really a downside in my opinion. The the rule of cost uh, a full price is 1,050 pound plus uh, the spokes, uh, the rim and the wheel building which can be roughly say close to 1200 pounds or just a bit more uh, but if you consider in the low maintenance, uh, uh, the long lasting and, uh, and you also considering to have a stronger wheel um, compared with uh, um, Ashram Eagle or uh, and the new uh, Shimano XT, um, the, the, the price in money can be actually less uh, um, if you consider in the maintenance as well. So this is uh, all I have to say, this is my, it's based on my experience and is uh, only purely my opinion on the rule of hub and the dynamo hub. So my final opinion about the dynamo hub it's poor because uh, I'm not really need to charge devices uh, generally speaking and when I need uh, the power provided by the dynamo I'm not, I'm not that much um, also you're losing a little bit of speed uh, uh, on the dynamo hub so in my opinion down um, the rule of speed hub I'm very happy uh, overall the pros and cons are, are good for me, a good balancing and obviously on a touring bike. I mean I'm very happy to have it on my touring bike, I will never put on my road bike, ever. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please if you have any questions please write a comment below or send me uh, a video and um, well be safe and see you on the road, peace. This one, uh, it's uh, the Iger one, is the um, basically the tool uh, I use to power my device. 
it's a transformer uh, you basically plug uh, this one into the dynamo hub and then uh, you can use uh, the two USB charger to charge your device now um, those two USB are a little bit oxidated at the moment and after two years of uh, using it only on touring they are not working anymore um, they stopped work uh, uh, the last tour I done on the west, uh, um, the west coast of Scotland uh, it was a little bit wet, uh, a bit raining so some moisture coming and they are a little bit oxidated also um, having two USB it doesn't mean you can uh, uh, charge two devices at a time the power you need to, to charge two devices at a time are way too much you, you must be cycling really over 15 km per hour all the time um, as I said uh, this one cost me around 100 pounds um, I'm not really impressed this is meant to be uh, working in the rain uh, this is meant to be left outside at night uh, I've been using uh, on my tour only like three times a year and uh, I always look after him uh, cover it overnight when they left, the bicycle has been left outside and uh, I'm not really impressed so this is another thing there are obviously uh, other gadgets to, to, uh, to connect to your Dynamo Hub this is only an example uh, but um, yeah overall I'm not really impressed Dynamo Hub uh, in my can be good uh, uh, over a road bicycle for uh, like endurance and multi-day riding so on the road bike uh, you are really really easy cycling more than 20 km per hour so you probably are more likely to be able to charge your, your GPS